Hi, my name is David, I'm a magician, and this is a look back at Season 1 of Fool Us and the 10 acts that I think you should check out if you haven't already. I'll tell you why I like them, what to look out for, and also a little bit of a where are they now because Season 1 aired back in 2011, which was 10 years ago. This list is going to be about the acts that I really enjoyed, stood out, or you're just good for reasons I will explain. So, in the order that they chronologically appeared, here is the first magician. Michael Vincent. Michael Vincent appeared on the pilot episode of Full Us and came back in episode 5 for another crack at fooling Penantella. While he did not fool them both times, that's not why I chose Michael Vincent. I'm including both acts in this because I enjoy his magic immensely. Michael has achieved a level of sleight of hand that most people will never attain within their lives, me included, and he pulls it off so effortlessly. As a magician, it's so enjoyable to see sleight of hand pulled off so well and so cleanly that it doubles my enjoyment of the act. In fact, that's something that Penn mentions when he talks about Michael's magic. In the pilot, Michael performs a sequence where the aces come back in the most magical way. With a wave over the deck, the aces seem to appear out of nowhere. Magicians call these colour changes, and they're just pure eye candy and the most fun things to learn, practice and just if you're the creative type, come up with. So forget that you know how it's done and just enjoy the beauty of the illusion. It's much more fun and not just a game of I know how you did that because most magicians don't care that you know how you did it. I mean, we know too. While well, this question is kind of irrelevant because magicians would be either out of work due to the pandemic or trying to make ends meet in various different ways. So I'm gonna talk about this in a pre and post pandemic sort of way. In Michael's case, he kept performing, of course, and being the master that he is, he also taught his magic in lectures, DVDs, books, videos, and what have you for other magicians to purchase. He's also on the socials, being quite active on Instagram, and he also has a YouTube channel with more of his classic style of magic, which I'll link in the description below. If you enjoy Michael Vincent like I do, Consider checking out my Ninja Turtle take on one of these routines, Vincent's Aces, which I'll link in the description below for you to watch right after this video. John Archer John Archer was also on the pilot episode of Full Us and managed to fool Penn and Teller with a routine of his own creation. What he created was the method and presentation behind the routine. The plot is a common plot that you'll see in Magic the more you watch Full Us and other magicians perform. So how do you make it different and memorable? Well, that's what I like about John's act. When you normally see this routine, it's done with plain envelopes and you whittle down the choices until there's just one in some sort of way. Here, John puts words on the envelope and suddenly all these jokes come along for the ride that make the routine fun and actually memorable. I don't think anyone cares they didn't win the money in the end. I think all they'll remember is that they had a great time watching a magician named John Archer listening to his jokes as they pick random envelopes with words on them. This is one of those routines where you want to see it live in person because every time John performs it, it's going to flow and end differently by virtue of the participant being able to pick any envelope they want. But until you catch him live, just enjoy how quick and witty he is. He doesn't need to think or make up what he says because the routine is so polished. And as a magician, performing routines where you don't know what's going to happen next is always interesting for the performer because it keeps you on your toes and makes each show unique. Since Full Us, John has also appeared on Britain's Got Talent and he finished as a semi-finalist and you can probably find his performances on YouTube somewhere as well. John is still performing and he's also an accomplished musician, being one of the first acts to take a ukulele out on his shows before all the other comedians started doing it also. Graham Jolly Graham Jolly is similar but different from John in that he's a comedy mentalist and not a comedy magician. When you think of a mentalist, you might get an image of a dark and serious business person, but here, Graham plays it for laughs, which I find refreshing. He also appeared on episode 1 of the series, not to be confused with the pilot, which is more like episode 0. If you come onto this show, what is your goal? To fool Penn and Teller? Maybe. To self-promote so you can get more leads, opportunities and raise your prices? Most probably. I don't know whether this was Graham's goal or not, but either way, this performance definitely upped his markability aspect. Graham performs two things, and the first one he knows he won't fool them, and he says this outright. So why perform it? 
to show off his character. This old and funny mentalist guy that can uh, guess what coloured balls you put into your pockets done with funny jokes as well. Then he gets into his actual fooler, which while it does its job of fooling Penatele is probably not something that a corporation is looking for at their end of year Christmas party or that you'd want at your birthday or wedding. But that first routine, stand up, funny, easy to understand. Perfect. That's not to say that the fooler is bad or anything, they're both great in their own context. Graham Jolly is the type of performer that if you took away his magic and just listened to him, you'll still be thoroughly entertained by his jokes and demeanour. It's funny how he says the first trick won't fool anyone, but both tricks fooled me. And even though I know I could probably go on YouTube and find some bad explanation about how it's done, I'm happy not knowing. But if I did want to know how it's done, I have sources on where to go to find out the exact method of these things, and then I would know. Mm. Graham also appeared on Britain's Got Talent, although when I looked online and tried to find performances, I couldn't really find anything. That or my Google foo is just really bad. But like any good magician, mentalist, Graham is still performing regularly in the UK. Young and Strange Young and Strange are a comedy magic duo consisting of the shorter Richard Young and the taller Sam Strange. They perform an illusion show which is also funny, which is why I like these guys. No old school smoke, hair somehow blowing in the wind while indoors, or mysterious looks. Just good stage magic and lots of laughs. They appeared on episode 2. Young and Strange play to their strengths and spend time establishing their characters for Penn and Teller and also for us so we get to know them a bit more before we see any magic take place. We've all seen that typical stage illusion where somebody gets into a box and someone else somehow switches places with them. I mean, it's so old that even uh, Houdini performed it with his wife Bess back in the 19th century. Here, Young and Strange change it up with a moving flag, screen and some surprises which I'll leave for you to discover if you haven't already seen it. It's always refreshing to see how other magicians take familiar illusions, tricks and plots and make it their own. Something that I try to do in my videos as well, so if you're interested you can uh, check them out. Or not, totally up to you, but keep watching. One of the things I really enjoy with this act is that something I'll call the persistence of motion. Strange has a flag and then he runs across behind the screen and comes out the other side looking young. Flag's motion continues all the way through and has very little lag. It's these sorts of details that just make me very happy when watching magic. And even though you don't see how it's done or you might know how it's done, just the timing and logistics of things is just perfect because if someone's too slow or too fast, it just breaks the whole illusion. Young and Strange are still performing as a duo and also individually as well, like Gray and Jolly. For the magicians and super interested muggles, Richard Young also had a podcast where he interviewed many magicians the world over. He got up to 100 episodes with the final few interviewing the heavy hitters of magic, including guys like Teller and David Copperfield. Piff the Magic Dragon. When Piff first showed up, people didn't know what to think, other than that they wished that they had the bright idea of wearing a dragon suit first. Although that didn't stop some people from being the second magic dragon. Sheesh. You may have discovered Piff from America's Got Talent, but here on Full Us, Season 1, Episode 3 was where his worldwide fame started from. If you boil it down to just a trick, here Piff performs a card trick. But there's so much more to this, you know, from his demeanour, the way he walks out, the jokes and the sarcastic and dryness of it all, it's really very good. And after this routine is over, you want to see more of this strange magic dragon and his little magic dog. And thankfully, you get to, from the way he interacts with Jonathan Ross, to how he speaks to Penn and Teller, and then finally with how he exits. The card trick that he does is very interesting and original to himself. The idea of a signed card changing bit by bit to another card hasn't been explored very much before or since uh, Piff has done it. It's also a trick that I want to learn too, but I just haven't come up with a presentation that's uh, different from Piff's yet. Another thing to look out for is the lines and jokes that he uses. They're all original to himself and not those usual magic-y hacky lines that you hear. Piff honed his act not only in the theatres that magicians would frequent, but also in the comedy clubs, so he'd have to make sure that his material was original because audiences and other comedians would know if he was using hack lines or stuff that wasn't his own. So to stand out, you've got to be original and have a magic dragon suit. 
Well, after Full House, Piff continued to perform and even got to travel internationally, coming down on to perform some shows. And I got to see him one of his shows and take a picture with him. I was so happy to meet him, but I don't think he was very happy to meet me at all. As mentioned earlier, he went on to do very well on America's Got Talent, and even though he didn't win, he eventually got himself a show in Las Vegas, where he still is currently, winning and life with magic. He has a podcast and a YouTube channel to keep him extra busy. Speaking of YouTube, if you enjoy what you're seeing, like and subscribe to my channel as well because uh, it helps. <laughs> Let me know in the comments what you think about my pick so far, and let's see if you can uh, predict what my next 5 picks are going to be coming in the next video. Until next time, keep breathing through your nose and have a magical day.